Making AI-styled videos can be fun, and with the power of my free workflow for Comfy UI, you too can make videos like these all in just a few minutes. Before I get stuck in, if you do need help with things such as installing Comfy UI, custom nodes, all that sort of stuff, then do check out the installation and more basic videos first. Those will get you used to the essentials of Comfy UI, and as usual, the links are down in the video description. So do check out those introductory introductory videos first if you need to, and there's even a whole playlist for Comfy UI 2, which takes you from zero to hero. Right then, what sort of things can you do with this workflow? Well, basically anything from plain face swaps to fully styled uncanny valley creations. You've got video input along with IP adapter styling, plus a bunch of settings to keep things controlled but, or set free. Let's start with a quick overview of what you get, as there are quite a lot of options. If I zoom out a bit, you'll see all the various coloured groups, most of which can be bypassed if you don't want to run that particular group. As for inputs, there are a few of them. Let's start here with the video input. Now, this is the video you want to change, nicely placed here in the video input group. It's a good idea to test a small number of frames to start with, as it can take five or 10 minutes to render an entire six second video. And you can do that by setting a frame load cap there. I've got the value set to 16, which should give you a decent draft output just to see what it looks like. If you set that down to zero, so we put that down to zero, that will render the entire video. Beneath that, we've got the frame rate. That has a maximum of 24, which is due to the load video node above it, but you can go lower if you fancy. And of course, there we've got the image scale. Now that scales it to roughly stable diffusion 1.5 sizes. And to run this with Animate Diff, you will need around 12 gig of VRAM. You can lower that a little bit, maybe reduce your VRAM requirements slightly, but obviously there is a lower limit there. Next to that, you've got the Stable Diffusion and VAE Loader. I've only tested this workflow with 1.5 models so far. That's your best bet if you want to avoid issues. For the IP Adapter Input Group, you can pretty much pair whatever model you want alongside the Stable Diffusion 1.5 Clip Vision model, not the SDXL one. Of course, remember I've only tested this with 1.5 and whichever model you choose up here, as you can see, you've got a variety, you've got plus, the normal one, light or face, which is the default here. So pick whichever one of those you want and you will get a different output in your video. Here are some examples using the IP adapter face model. They're often weird and creepy, which is excellent and just in time for Halloween. As the face adapter focuses more on faces, it's good at making people in your source video take on aspects of your input image expressions, styles such as 3D anime, photorealism, cartoon, etc. All of those aspects will be incorporated into your output. Now down here, I've got it bypassed, but there is a face cropping node as well with a variety of different options to choose from for the face detection. So if you are using a face in there, make sure that this image crop gives you a proper face in that preview because sometimes it doesn't quite work. For example, if you've got an anime face in there, you may need to select the anime face model for the detector to pick that up and crop it properly. Now you don't want to carry on running if it if you do get an incorrect crop. So what you can do is you can do view queue there. So let's turn on anime face. We'll run this. We'll see if it gives me a little crop face preview that's any good. No, it's not. So what you do then is you click cancel, stop that from running and then change the model to something which will actually work. Or of course, you can just bypass it altogether. Bypassing it altogether is very handy, of course, when you're not using the face model. So if you're using the plus or the normal or the light one, I found the light one is very good for things like styles and patterns, and you can use it for backgrounds as well. For example, maybe you'd want a waterfall in the background, so you can put a waterfall in there. You'd bypass that node because it obviously hasn't got a face in, 
and you change the IP adapter to something like IP adapter plus or IP adapter, the normal one, or maybe light if you just want a style. So there's lots and lots of options you can get in there. Use faces, patterns, styles, backgrounds, and just see what comes out. The penultimate input is the animate diff group. This is just like all the other animate diff videos I've done, and chances are you'll not want to change any of these settings from those defaults. The final input is also optional, as you can only use this for research purposes, which is the reactor section. This will do a very basic, low quality, face only swap on your video so it won't do any styling. You may wish to use this either before or after your original video, but do note the license restrictions. Up the top here are the control nets and also over to the right there, there's a background replacement section as well. If you're low on VRAM, you can disable these. And I've also added an auxiliary control net here, which is slightly different to that one in that you can pick a variety of different preprocessors there. So obviously make sure your preprocessor and model match up whatever you're picking in there. If you do have it enabled, remember you can just bypass it by clicking bypass. The optional background removal group can come in handy if you've got a green screen video as your input and you want to use a different background later. Maybe you've got a video editor and you're doing fancy stuff in that. It will work without a chroma color background as well, but of course the removal quality will vary here. You can see some examples of removing the background. You could also maybe tweak it a little bit to output a green screen. It's all up to you as to what you want to achieve. I've also given you some notes down here as to what you can expect and a reminder of some of the things which I've just been through. Basically, like it says down there, if you lower some of the settings, then you can have it do more of its own thing, or you can tighten some of the settings and get it closer to the input video. So as you can see there with lower denoise, so something like around 0.5, that'll be much, much closer to your input video. Whereas if you set the denoise to one, then it will almost completely ignore that video. That is unless you're applying the control nets. Now, if you've got a lower control net, that will of course ignore the video more and give you a better representation of the image that you've provided over there in your IP adapter and if you make the control net even higher so up here you've got the settings so if you make this quite strong that's quite a strong setting basically the more you let it do its own thing the more influence the input image will have and your prompts but the more you try to control it the more like your input video will be. Now, I've tended to not use any prompts at all in these. I'm just using the IP adapter or perhaps single words to describe the image, such as waterfall or man or dog or rodent. Obviously, you would never use cat in your prompts. Just as an example there, it's got the denoise of one, so that is nothing like the input video, and it has just created kind of your standard animate diff Thing. As a picture is said to paint a thousand words, I've created this little set of examples. Some more closely match the source video and some go over 9,000. As you can see, it's entirely up to you how far you want to go. I know this is a fairly basic workflow, but hopefully it helps to inspire you just a little bit. Maybe add some prompt scheduling in there, that sort of thing. Eventually, I'll put this up on Comfy Workflows too. So when you click the manager and go to Comfy UI Workflow Gallery, search for Nerdy Rodent or something, and it will be up there too. Remember, you can find links down in the video description. And if you're stuck on the basics, then do check out this next Nerdy Rodent video.